Well, howdy folks. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to work on this golf cart. You know, ever since I got this thing somewhat back together, and this is probably the most you guys have seen back together, well, it would always run faster in reverse than it did forward. Uh, so I know it's got to be in the timing. Um, I might have misadjusted it whenever I put it together originally, but I'm curious to see what it's, what's going on with it. So we're going to go ahead and investigate and see if we can't get it to run a little bit better because it you know the amount we have been running it it seems to get a little bit hot too so that kind of tells me that the timing is also not correct on it so and this is kind of weird because this is a reverse running and forward running engine so you have to adjust the timing between the two forward and reverse so let's dive down into it and see what we can find all right so the one section of the manual it talks about you know adjusting the circuit breaker the points here um and this section here just tells you you know make sure they're clean and all that stuff and you know stuff we don't really care about we know we got new points so in the other section of the manual yeah this one here it tells you you know to adjust it to the highest point of the cam and use a 22 thousandths wire gauge or feeler gauge in there uh, they recommend a wire gauge uh, I don't believe I have any so I'm just gonna use feeler gauges for that so we can set that section aside and this is other stuff it's, it's very good to know or very handy to know is there's a hole that's drilled in the side of the case over here in fact it's uh, right down through here and it's there's a flywheel on the back side of this fan in here and there's two marks on it one for forward and one for reverse and that's how you do your timing so that's what that section there shows you. And then this section here, it tells you, you know, your forward timing and your reverse timing. And so those, just to make a note here is those marks that are on the flywheel that's back here, it's 25 degrees before top dead center. So that's where they want the timing on this. Um, and you can actually change that. And I'll explain that here in a little bit. So. What it says to do is use a light, which that's up here, and turn it to where you know the light lights up and your marks line up and then adjust your points to just um, open at that time. In other words, the light would go out. So I did that. So I ran it the other direction. And I could not for the life of me get it to match up like it's supposed to so it says in the manual that you can turn these gap either lower or higher but it says in here that you don't want you uh it wants you basically within 16 thousandths to 28 thousandths and if you can't obtain that it says you have to retime the engine well i checked everything and I could not get it within that to actually get it to both lines to line up for some reason. So <clears throat> what I did is this inspection plate in here. I took and put it in my mill and I cut it five more degrees on this end. And that's where these screws are sitting at right now. So whenever I put this back in, uh, the one screw down here for the condenser was hitting the, the main part of the fan housing here. So I just used the Dremel and you know, ground it out a little bit so it would fit in there. So now I have that movement. So, <clears throat> and also looking at this, I got the idea of putting a Dow indicator on top of the piston. So right now I'm sitting perfectly at top dead center. So I did that and then if I count, it's 165 to 170 thousands off the top dead center and my lines line up down here. So I know that my piston and the flywheel are on. Uh, I was suspecting that could be an issue. Well, that was not the case. I mean, they are almost dead on. I mean, you know, you have to give some tolerances in with that because sometimes, you know, machining, they're close, but not always perfect. So I did check that. So with that said, <clears throat> after I modified this, I was looking there's a line and there's a dot on the side of the case I'm assuming that's a factory mark well 
it's kind of interesting, but it's sitting really, really close to that, but it's a little bit past it. So I don't know, you know, after it's been running a while or if somebody else was in here, maybe this isn't the correct inspection plate that came with this engine. I don't know, but I find that that's very interesting. But I could not get those to line up beforehand. So there had to be something off. Maybe this inspection plate was out of another engine. I don't know. Maybe this uh, uh, cam there was out of another engine. I don't know. You know, it's hard to tell with previous histories and stuff like that. But so <clears throat> with that said, you know, like I said, this plate, once it's set, you don't really have to mess with it at all. So what I'm going to do is we're going to rotate this and it should be right there's 100 should be right around 100 and there's 60 70 yeah somewhere in here you can see right there's 170 and it's just lights just coming on and off right there so <clears throat> with that I know the points are opening up so we'll take the flashlight and look down through this timing hole down here and that mark down there is almost dead on so that makes perfect sense so let's go to the other side so they're top dead center where we keep going there's a hundred and and look right there's 170 168 actually so it's right in that range so I'm only a few thousandths off forward in reverse in this setup so far right now. And if I look down through this hole, that timing mark is almost perfectly dead center again. So I got everything set pretty good. One of the things that I wanted to point out is, we'll turn this back to top dead center here, right there. And the only way I could achieve that is with a 26 thousandths point gap. So, the book says you're allowed up to 28. Well, 26 is where I'm getting it. Uh, some engines might be a little bit closer, a little bit farther. You know, this cam could be worn a little bit more on this. I'm not sure, but it does seem like everything is right there. So, if you're going to go ahead and time yours, I would almost recommend checking it kind of similar way, but you don't have to use a dial indicator. I mean, you can look down through this hole since, um, you know, this one here is good. So I'm assuming a lot of other ones are. And as long as your keyway and stuff is good down in there, I don't see any problem why they would be out of time. But <clears throat> what I would do is turn it to the one hole, open, you know, check your point gap and all that beforehand. But turn it to the one hole, hook a light up to it, and make it to where it just comes, turns off. Then I would turn it to the other side, and then if you cannot get it to turn off by adjusting this or whatever, I would probably go ahead and just file that a little bit. I mean, yeah, I use the mill to you know cut it out five more degrees, but I honestly think I didn't really need the whole five degrees. Because, you know, it's really close. So what I would do is just take a 730 seconds file and just file it open a little bit. And then keep on turning it just to where, you know, it comes out right. I would screw this inspection plate down whenever you get it to that point. Then I would adjust your point gap to get it to where it is dead center of the hole forward, dead center of the hole reverse. And then if you have to go back and adjust your inspection plate just a little bit to get it there, I would do that. But, you know, be careful when doing this. It's, it could be very easy to get it one way or the other. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together. And we're going to go ahead and start it up and see if it made any improvements. All right. So one of the other things that you can do to check the timing on this is use a timing light. So you can jack up the rear end, you know, to get the tires off the ground, start it up in forward to reverse and shine your light down through this hole. And you should see 
that timing indicator then start up in the other direction and you know run it a little bit and you should see that timing indicator and that'll tell you if your that inspection plate is zeroed out or in the center where it should be so i did that with this and it looks like it's uh pretty much dead on so i think the timing and everything's good on this so the only thing it's left to do is take it for a ride and see how it performs all right so we got everything together here uh, we'll start up and see what happens. I can tell you right now, it runs very well in reverse. Boy, it's hard to tell. It seems like it runs about the same in forward and reverse now. So, I would say this is a success. downfall is the uh, yard's a little bit wet so it just started spinning there but well guys I would say that this was a success I would like to thank you for uh, watching please hit that like and subscribe button and until next time take care